Kenyon writes, I sorted my paper yesterday and realised I'm swimming in a sea of scraps. Does anyone have a good idea on how to use up lots of scraps and offcuts? Glitter Girl, can you help a Kenyan with a scrap strategy? Of course I can. Now, this week we're going to look at three different strategies for using scraps, but I'm still going to start with some full page papers and new products to show you because these two lines just hit the store here at Two Peas in a Bucket, so I wanted to give you a look at something that you might ignore otherwise. Because I'll be honest, this is these are two collections that I would never go to because it's a baby girl and a baby boy collection. And the... Um, the embellishments are quite like what you would expect from a baby collection. They're very themed. They say all sorts of cute little things that are great for baby pages, but pretty difficult to um, to work on other sorts of themes because they're pretty specific. But then we get into this embellishment sheet also includes an alphabet, which that could be used for quite a lot more. And it's um, the amount of stuff that's really specific is just kind of limited to these a few of the bits at the top because there are also border stickers, photo corners, and some of the um, words and things up here. Some are quite specific, some um, are a bit more uh, versatile and could be used here and there. So we're getting to something that uh, might be useful even if you didn't have a baby girl picture to scrapbook perhaps. And um, the cutout sheet is relatively specific and there's a, a, a border and see then we get all these pattern papers that are very much this themed baby collection with all sorts of pinks and lots of cutesy animals animal prints and hearts and polka dots so these are are very very baby themed but I would look at this side in the store if I were shopping in person and if I only saw this side I would walk right past it. I would never take a second look because I don't have baby photos to scrapbook. However, if I turn it over, now I have a collection that I'm in love with as somebody who doesn't use many themed products and looks instead for smaller patterns that can mix and match. So there's a floral, a gingham, a cloud print, a cupcake, a stripe, a chevron, a tiny, tiny little white polka dot, and a tone-on-tone -tone heart design. Now, those are papers that I know I can use right to the very end because they're all different things that I can cut up and use in all sorts of, of in all, for all sorts of topics. The same thing for the baby boy collection. So there are some specifics, some mix of specific and more general, and then these have one side each that's great if you have baby boy photos and quite a few that you know they would still go into toddlers and things like that but if I turn this over I now have lots of patterns that I would ignore otherwise. That's all from Bella Boulevard and the names are it's just called the baby boy and the baby girl collection so it'll be nice and easy for you to find. So this just hit the store this week and I do actually have a few baby girl photos to scrapbook this week even though it's not my baby so don't start any glitter girl rumors just yet but I am, am going to give some of these a try and even though I'm going to use them for something that is on that theme I definitely think there are plenty of ways to use them um, in anything so I'm going to use larger pieces of these two papers that's the polka dot called pretty in pink and the chevron which is called daddy's girl and um, but then I need to get on with the challenge that we were set this week and that's how can I get more from my scraps well I start almost every layout if not every single page with items from my scrap basket so I'm going to grab a whole bunch of different scraps that are in my basket right now and then choose the ones that will be most useful for this first project so here is a big handful of paper just dumped straight from my basket onto the table and I know that this is the color scheme I want to start with this pale pink and something that's kind of uh, a middle of the range brown so sort of around a craft color and so from there I would just start looking for things in the stack and pulling out things that are pink or craft and things that that might match or things that just catch my eye so that I can 
narrow this down to just some smaller scraps. And at this point, I'm really not too fussy about whether all the pinks are the same pink, anything like that. Just trying to create a bit of a color collection because I don't sort my scraps in any way. <laughs> this is what they're like. They're all just in one place all together. And um, I find this is easier to find combinations that I wouldn't necessarily use. And it, this way I spend a lot less time and space dedicated to my scraps. But it, lots of people have different systems for what works for you. So whatever does work for you. Um, just grab hold of that and embrace it. Don't, if it's working, don't change it. First strategy to use up scraps is to use strips. And especially if I can dedicate a large amount of the page space to photographs and then have a spot on the page that I fill in with, um, with strips. So I have these three photos. Let's see what order I want them in. Okay, and three four by six pictures will take up the full 12 inch width of the page and I want to leave a couple inches at the bottom and then I'm going to fill a large area of the top here with, um, with the strips that I cut from the Keep scrap. that one for a moment and then I want to see what this measurement should be. So I place one and I figure out how wide I want this box that's going to be filled with strips to be. And I just mark it by folding it and then I'll cut that strip. And in this instance that has turned out to be three and a half inches. And then I'm going to cut them one inch wide because all of my strips are quite and um, I've got quite large strips to work with so I'm not going to have any trouble but if I really wanted to push down to the tiniest bits of paper in my stack then I could just make them smaller of course and I'm going to cut enough of those to fill the whole um, the whole width so I need 12 one inch by three and a half inch strips. From here I can go with all sorts of different little touches to make this same technique look different on a variety of layouts. One little trick is that I always cut one strip slightly larger than the rest so that I can place that one off the edge of the page and that way if your measurement isn't quite exact you won't end up with any gaps in between and you can just cut off the extra of the, um, the last strip. So these are all one inch according to my ruler but I have one that's about an inch and a quarter so that I can make up for any sort of imperfection in the measurements. Now I'm going to just go ahead and glue them straight to the background sheet and there are all different ways that you could do that. I'm going to do it nice and even and square and make a um, solid border that goes across the page but you can do other things to dress this up. You can make them all a little bit wonky and overlapped and uneven. You can make them different lengths. You can add stitching and make it very quilted and you can take this same idea of taking a bunch of different strips that are about an inch wide and making it into a, a focus element of embellishment on your page. And from this point I can go ahead and finish the layout with the other pattern paper that I wanted to make sure I used and then whatever embellishments, title, and writing that I want to add on top. Pretty quickly with just a little bit of embellishment from the sticker sheets in that same collection everything's all finished and that strategy of using one inch strips can go across any sort of page just look for any place where you have an expanse and then see if you can fill it with a variety of scraps and off cuts. Much like Bella Boulevard another collection that's just hit the store that has an interesting 
A side and B side combination are the papers from Jelly Bean Soup. And here are two of the the A sides of those papers. So this one is called Chicken Thighs and has lots of little Easter chicks with umbrellas. And this one has old fashioned um, telephones and is called Butter Beans. But if I flip these two patterns over, I now have a red and white small pattern that's repeating and a yellow and white wood grain. So a lot more uh, versatile for different themes and because the patterns read on a smaller scale they're easy to use on cards or mini books as well. So just something to have a look in case the A side doesn't strike your fancy but the B side is just what you're after. So for my second layout today I'm going to use the back of the chicken thighs paper which has this um, yellow wood grain as the background sheet of the 12 by 12. Page design I'm starting with three photos again but these are two 4 by 4 squares and then one 4 by 5 and um, again arranged in that same idea of across the page in a horizontal line but with the larger photo in the center. You can also do um, you can do all 4 by 4 and one particular look I really like is you have three 4 by 4 but you put one on a 4 by 4 block of chipboard to raise it up off the page. So if you have three shots that are quite similar or in a sequence that can work to bring your attention to one over the other two. And from here I've then added two 1 inch strips from that second jelly bean suit paper which gives me all this room at the top and this is what I'm going to fill with scraps and for this strategy I'm going to use punches and dies to repeat shapes and create this um, busy embellished look at the top of the page um, while not having any embellishment that actually touches the photographs. So for this I wanted to use this idea of red and yellow and then go with primary colors. So I went looking for scraps in red, yellow, and um, green or blue and have come up with a stack that looks a bit like this. I thought I would have more um, royal blue in my stack but it turns out that I don't have that many papers in royal blue. I'm not quite sure if that means I just don't buy royal blue papers or if it's just not as popular a color in the different collections or maybe when I do get one I use it all up. So there's a little bit here that's from American Crafts Chap but then I've also pulled out this um, Cosmo Cricket from Social Club which is more a navy blue but I think it will work just fine to to include the blue because there's quite a lot of blue in the photos where you can see from the upholstery and the books and things like that. So I'm going to use all sorts of scraps like this and I'm going to fill the top part of the page with them. I took all those scraps and used the Nestability's nested steel roll dies and I used a plain circle and the pinked circle because these two fit together. There's also a scallop circle in that same set that will, um, well in another separate set, but they the same size ratio so they fit together. But I went with the pinked edge and from that I was able to take all those scraps and make these little pairs of papers. So each pair has a pinked pair behind a plain circle. And they're all different patterns, but they're all those colors that I picked out to start with. And then I've inked all the edges of everything in black so that they all um, match a little bit. And if you didn't have a die cutting system or you didn't have those dies, you could do the same effect with a circle cutter, with circle punches, with punches in different shapes and sizes. You can do the same thing with an electronic die cutter and cut the sizes that you want to use. But the idea is that you would take all different scraps and make little layered um shapes so that you'd have a circle with another layer behind or it could be two circles or anything like that. But you want to take one shape and repeat it over several different patterns. From here then I can start arranging these on the, the page in the space that I have here. And what I want to do is to start with the largest ones first and then I use the smaller to fill in the gaps. So I try to set these so they go off the edge of the page and I'll get everything kind of placed and then I'll go back and adhere it. So for example there were two that had red in the in the background pinked circle so I separated those two and put the one with the different color with the green pinked mat in the middle and then I go to the next size. This one also has green so I want to separate that from the green. 
This one also has red. Perhaps kind of space it up here where it's going to be a little bit more separate. And then once I get to kind of a stage like this, I can see how many I, how many more circles I'm going to need to fill in all those gaps. Once you've filled the entire top of the page with the different circles, then you can start to add, decide how much more you want to add in or whether you want to leave it just as plain paper. So one thing I started to do was to take um, just one design to repeat, the design from the border that I'd added at the bottom, and I punched six circles from that and put those on pop dots so that I can zigzag them across the mix. And although there are all sorts of patterns and colors going on up here, that's the one one pattern that will repeat and it also appears at the bottom of the page. So that just kind of gives a little bit of, um, of order to what is otherwise very chaotic and, and purposely chaotic. Then if you want even more from that, start to look at other elements in your stash that are the same sort of shape. So I thought perhaps I might throw in some of these little la the um, mini lace doilies from Jenny Bolin. And I, I grabbed a few different kinds of brads that might work because those are circular and also gems, which I did have in a, a nice blue. That was uh, my mind's eye set. And so I can fill in any gaps that I want and it's just up to you and your style how much you want to add versus how plain you want it to be. And if you want fewer pieces, less chaos, go with larger circles because five big circles is a lot less chaotic than 20 very small small circles. So just keep it um, to whatever kind of level works with your style and your photos. Here's that version all finished. So I filled in this top section with all sorts of little circular embellishments, but the bottom of the page just has a relatively simple title and room for journaling and nothing from this part is overlapping on the bottom half of the page. So that barrier border can separate as much or as little embellishment as you want to add up here with the scraps and still keep your photos on show in the bottom half of the layout. So um, one more strategy to go and we'll see how many more scraps we can bust this week. For this last page, I'm just going to work with a single oddball 4x6 that I didn't have any other photos that went with it, but I still wanted that in my album. And when I went looking for scraps this time, instead of pulling by a certain color, I looked for the size of the piece, and I wanted all sorts of different things that were just strips. So I've pulled nothing that's a full sheet, nothing that's blocks or tiny little pieces, but all um, just long strips of various sizes and things like that. And it turned out that from that I could get quite a few that would work in a similar color scheme. So I just weeded out anything that really wasn't going to work. And then I'm starting this page on a background sheet that's pink with cream polka dots from Pebbles in the With Love collection. And one of these is also the strip on the bottom of that page. I think it's this one. Yeah. So this is the branding strip at the bottom. So I've cut that off to include in the layout. So I'm just going to be using strips and then I'm actually going to use one other element which is this um, floral paper from October afternoon and I'm going to cut one or two of the flowers from this and you can see that's essentially what I've been doing with this whole sheet is treating it like die cuts that need to be cut out um, instead of using it as a full sheet. So I'm going to put that to the side but I'm going to look at different ways that I could use these strips to create a whole layout instead of needing a big box of pattern paper like how I normally start a page. I'm going to start at the top and the bottom of the page and I'm going to add ink to these as I go. I think I'll switch back to brown ink for this particular page and I want to create a line of different paper strips at the top and bottom of the page. <laughs> With a border in place at the top and the bottom, then I can look to where I want to place the photo and use the remaining strips to create essentially a photo mat or a frame that goes around the photo but without having a large block of paper. So I'll cut and ink these to about the right size to work and then I'll piece them all together 
to figure out where each piece should go. Getting a piece in the middle out of strips, I essentially want to get to a point like this where I can see that I won't have any gaps and I'll be able to just put the photo on top and it won't be obvious that there's a hole in the pattern paper behind the, um, the photograph. So once I get to a stage like this, then I'll start to adhere it. And to make sure it doesn't move, I'll hold everything down with one hand and then just pick up and start to tack the adhesive down. This isn't the the only adhesive I'll use um, in this process, but what I want to do is make sure I get things so that they don't move while I'm working on the other scraps of paper because they're, it's, it's a little more fiddly than having um, the normal block of paper. So get everything tacked into place. And then I can come back and add adhesive in all those other spots where it needs to go. The of working with so many strips and not any other blocky elements is that everything then starts to be a bit too, too much in the horizontal lines or if you're doing it the other direction in the vertical lines. So I've cut one of the um, flowers from the side of the pattern paper and that will give it a, a little bit more movement in a, in a different direction. And I just want to tuck this right at the edge of the photo and this side of the flower where it's going to be flat to the photo is just normal adhesive but then I've added a few foam squares to this end so that it will um, have a little bit of dimension there on the page and then I can take some of those smaller scraps that I had left over and start to tuck things into this little arrangement here and here's the finished version with the title added, with all the various little bits of writing that I wanted to include to make sense of both the foreground and the background of this photo. And then the only embellishment I added past that were, was this, a few of these little um, embellishments from the Dear Lizzie Buttons and Accents set. And, um, and these two little word stickers which were at the bottom of a sheet of letters by Cosmo Cricket. And so that's a third strategy using all strips. So your challenge this week is to take any of those three strategies and put it to use on your own page. Get some more use out of your scraps and offcuts and I'd love to see your work in the gallery. For even more ideas on how to get great pages from your scraps, you might want to check out The Hitchhiker's Guide to Scrapbooking, a workshop here at Two Peas in a Bucket. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com. Thank you.